Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we're playing another Total War Warhammer 2 Battle Replay. This one is a community card sent in by Lightning Strikes, and he's actually against Tokshin, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is a nice close match, very interesting indeed. So, front line, he's got the Hellebrunei, Bleak Swords, Dread Spears, Bleak Swords, Dread Spears, Bleak Swords, Dread Spears, Bleak Swords. Yeah, bit of a pattern there. And you see, they all have a ton of chevrons. I mean, it gives them some extra stats. I mean, you know, I mean, 39, 39... Uh, 29 of 50, 50 melee defense of the Dread Spears is pretty good. And it's a nice affordable way to sort of s kind of get the quality up for these guys. Because, frankly, you want to bring a lot of fodder. You don't want to bring things like executioners or anything particularly expensive in your front line against the Vampire Coast. Because they just get blown up. They just get shot to pieces. But getting a few chevrons in there, it means all of your front line is actually quite good at fighting. But they all have silver shields, which really helps. So that's a nice way to get some extra value out of your front line. Just uh, use the chevron to up the quality, but you get to keep the silver shields, which is nice. So these guys should be able to beat the brakes off any of the uh, sort of fodder units pretty damn happily. And they should be able to take a lot of gunfire, so that's really good. Also, a couple of Reaper bolt throwers. These guys, I think, are vital in this matchup. They are super useful. They're just really good. Uh, they're great for counter artillery. Um, any large units you can shoot out for days. Um, any mounted lords. Nice big target there. These guys can work wonders. So uh, I really like this pick. Reaper Bolt Throws I think are very nice. Also, shades. You don't often see shades. But actually it's very important for the Dark Elves to be hidden. So the shades are quite expensive. But they have amazing AP values. And you need something with AP. None of the front line does. So the front line, that's going to hold back the tide of zombies. And the fodder. And, I guess, bigger stuff too. I mean, they're all very defensive units, these. So these guys can hold back the tide, but you need something with punch to kill the big scary things. So that's why you need shades. And the shades are great because they stalk. Uh, that means they're not going to get blown up from a distance. So I love that. Also, Loki of Fellheart. Really awesome to see Loki of Fellheart. So uh, if you have a quick look at his abilities. So, I mean, his stats are pretty great. Anti-infantry. Uh, but he's very survivable. He's got Deadly Onslaught. He's got Dreaded Duelist, which puts these stats up to, like, crazy high. Uh, maybe, like, 90 and 90. It's nice. Also, he has the Helm of the Kraken, which puts his melee defense up even more, which is great, uh, because he replenishes hit points in melee, which is nice. So he'll sit there with extra melee defense, not getting hit as often, and healing. So that's pretty great. He is super survivable. And frankly, with all the artillery and other abilities and scary stuff, um, yeah, lords can get sniped out pretty easily against the Vampire Coast. Just the amount of guns they have, they can kill lords very quickly. So if he can get stuck in the front line, he can kill fodder for weeks and not have to worry. So it's pretty great. Also, Sorceress of Fire. So uh, Cascading Fire Cloak is really nice to, you know, keep your guys more resilient, frankly. Um, upping that melee defense is wonderful. Also, Fireball, that'll be good for helping snipe things out a bit. So uh, that and the Bolt Throwers is going to be some pretty good damage at range with the Fireball. So I love that. And also the Burning Skull. It's going to do a lot of damage if you can get it down the line. So Tokshin here, you see he's got some Fell Bats. Oh, also, there are some Dark Riders back here, which we'll see... Come in useful, but a little bit later than they should have done. Anyway, so, um, yeah, fell bats on either side. These guys would be great for sort of just causing a hassle in the back line. Also, he's got a ton of animated hulks. So he's got a nice mixture of fodder and very damaging units. Because, yeah, animated hulks, they hit really hard. So the mixture of the two... That's a very resilient front line. Also, you can see here he's got some deck gunners. These guys, very long range for uh, sort of a weapon team. So you've got to love this. But uh, yeah, really good damage. And they're shield breakers, which is rather nice. So uh, if they're focusing on the same target, they can get some good damage into them. But uh, yeah, without any other guns, the shield breaker isn't going to be the most, you know, the best stat for them. But it still gets some good work done. But Count Noctilus and a Neckfakes Colossus. I love doing double Neckfakes Colossus. But this is exactly why you need things like the Shades and stuff like that. You need something with some punch. Um, obviously at this range, the Bolt Throwers are going to be very, very, very useful here. But uh, yeah, you need something to be able to deal with this kind of stuff if you see it. And at range, it's the best way to deal with them. So long as you can bog them down with something cheap. But let's be honest... There's enough stuff cheap to bog them down with to stop them firing at what they want. So, uh, it's pretty cool. I really like this army. And I really like this army. I like both of these armies. They're both really good. So this is going to be incredibly tough for both of them. So you can see the front line is moving up straight away. Um, he's trying to put some distance between, you know, his front and back line. Which, honestly, I... 
I'm not sure if he really needed to. I think it would have been better to let these guys come to him, but I guess he didn't want the Necrofexes, you know, getting too much damage into things, so he wanted to get stuck in the front line. Um, so you'll see that he will move all these guys up. But I think keeping, you know, these guys quite high and tight is not too bad, because frankly, the summons that Noctilus gets for zombies has a crazy range. Um, I didn't realise how good the range was. I feel like it's changed since... Uh, so sort of the press build, but you'll see, it's mad how far away he can summon zombies. So yeah, you don't really need to put too much distance between the summoning and this stuff, because this stuff is going to get bogged down regardless. So it's a bit weird. But anyway, so, Bolt Throw is still firing. You see, Noctilus is taking a crazy amount of damage right now. He's using Invocation to Heck already. I mean, he's using Invocation to Heck, and he's already that damaged. Yeah, he's going to hit his healing cap pretty damn quickly. So Noctilus is in a lot of trouble. But he's getting some good shots into things. So uh, the other neck effects also getting some good shots into things. The deck gunners are firing, which is definitely going to hurt a bit. It's going to add up, and wow, those cannonballs went a long way. Pretty cool. So uh, you can see the shade has taken a bit of damage. But these guys, you know, they're poised. They're poised and ready. But it would be lovely if they could move up a bit and then just demolish some animated hulks. Like a volley from these guys and those animated hulks with almost no health. So I think you can be a bit more, um, a bit more aggressive with those guys, um, just to take out these armored targets, because without the animated hulks in here, which are very big, easy to kill targets, um, you know, with a ton of uh, ranged fire, they're going to die pretty quickly. So I think it's worthwhile getting rid of them, and then the bleak swords can just kill everything else, frankly. So uh, I think that's the way to do it. But obviously he wanted to keep his bolt throws online, because he wanted to be able to take out the, uh, you know, count Noctilus and the neck effects from range like this, which is definitely useful. So it's hard to say which strategy is right. I think he could have done either. Um, frankly, but uh, this is what he went with. So yeah. Anyway, Count Noctilus, super injured. You can see his healing cap already, but he is still going, but not a lot of kills yet. Not a lot of kills. He's taking a lot of damage. And here we go. Look at that. Look how far away that was summoned. That's ridiculous. That's halfway across the map, which is just obscene. So here you can see the Deckhands mob are going to get into the, uh, well, the cookie jar, as I think Italian Spartacus would say. Anyway, so here you can see the Sorceress of Fire is trying to deal with this. Loki here is running in. He's going to get stuck in the front line where he can regenerate and just pin everything back for hours. Um, he is very survivable. That's his one job. Just sit there and never die and kill infantry. Okay, he's got a few jobs. He's great. He's really good at it, though. Um, but not a huge amount of uti uh, utility from Loki. You know, you've got to bring him with a spellcaster. But... If you want a fire spellcaster, then why not bring him? You don't want to bring, like, Malekith or something, um, and then a firecaster if you just want a firecaster. Now you have a nice option to bring, sort of, a genuinely good melee lord, instead of having to resort to, sort of, like, a dread lord or something. So anyway, more fireballs coming in, and you can see the shades here. They're just trying to kill these bats and all of this fodder. This is really bad for the bolt throwers. And I think one of them, it's hard to tell because this wizard is everywhere. Yeah, so one of the bolt throws is basically done, which sucks. But the front line, you can see, is very, very even. Like, unbelievably so. It looks like the Vampire Coast just have the advantage. Uh, I mean, the Helebrenai are holding back so much stuff over here. But uh, generally, it looks like everything's holding pretty damn well. A lot of stuff is crumbling as other places. The elves are running away. It's all pretty... It's all pretty even. All pretty even. But, um, yeah, Loki has barely taken any damage. He's got the Necrofex Colossus wrapped up in melee. So that's pretty great. But here you can see... The Dark Riders are only just moving. These guys, 33 and 11 kills, they could be dead already. Frankly, one charge, you know, from Dark Riders. These guys are screwed. They are so bad in melee. They get killed in seconds. Another fireball on Noctilus. He is so injured. And the bolt throwers are back online, which is really bad for the Vampire Coast. But Lightning Strikes, he's holding firm. He's being very conservative. He's got a ton of shades left. But unfortunately, there's a lot of holes in his front line now. His front line is starting to buckle in a few places, so it's going to be difficult for his shades to really capitalise. And some cannon fire, it's pretty rough. Tokshin, very cleverly, throwing Noctilus in the trees. You can see there's a big old tree there that's going to absorb some of the fire. Although not quite well enough. Um, oh no. But still, worth a try, trying to hide like that. So here you can see, huge volley of arrows, trying to get rid of this neck effects, because it has so much health. And frankly, more zombies over here. It's very tough to keep these Reaper Bolt Throws online. But look how far away he can summon his zombie deck hands. That is insane. Absolutely ludicrous. I don't think that's the standard summon. I think that's with uh, with Roth's Moon Dial that you can summon that far away. But it's pretty amazing. So here, shades are starting to get some good shots in, which is lovely. These shades seem to have run into melee somehow. Um, I guess he just wanted to bog this stuff down to let the other ones fire, rather than everything be able to surge forward, which kind of makes sense, but he is pulling out now. Um, I guess he didn't really want to be in there. It's hard to tell. I'm not quite sure what he was trying to shoot. But over here, um, Dark Riders ran in, 
And they've taken out both deck gunners. Yeah, those deck gunners are going to be gone in a second. Yeah, there they go. So, that is so cost effective. That's, uh, what, like 450 funds took out uh, 1,400. Straight away. Just ridiculous. All, all of this stuff had to come back to deal with it. Which leaves all of this stuff with slightly less backup. So, the shades are able to capitalize. Um, these ones, they are trying to hold the line here, but uh, it's tough. But this Necrofax is taking a ton of damage. Unfortunately, over here... This is really bad, uh, frankly. Ooh, a lot of damage on Loki. This is really bad for the Dark Elves. Having the Reaper Bolt throwers taken offline, just with these cheap, just free summons of zombies, these zombies are able to cut through everything, because they just don't die. And frankly, in combat, they're good enough to be able to fight some Reaper Bolt thrower crews that are also pretty terrible in combat. Um, and, yeah, nothing could really ki kill them quick enough. Zombie pirate deckhand mobs, they are so resilient. They are a great tar pit. They just never die. So, um, yeah, it's pretty rough. It's pretty difficult to keep your artillery crews online in the face of something like that. So here you can see Noctilus is super injured. Over here, you can see uh, the Necrofax Colossus is super injured. And here, the Shades are sort of having to do a tactical retreat with this lot, while the other ones are keeping this stuff in melee. These ones need to turn around. They ran away, and they need to turn around and start shooting the Necrofax Colossus. This is very, very bad. But luckily, this Reaper Bolt Thrower has got back online, and it'll be able to start shooting at... Uh, I think he goes for Noctilus, actually, uh, with them. Yep, and the Shades shoot at this one. So, Necrofax Colossus taking a ton of damage, but he's got into range now. And uh, he's going to do some good damage to those shades. These ones bogged down by so much, it's only a matter of time before they get dragged down by all the fodder. Loki of Felhart, though, he's fighting animated hulks and a ton of fodder. And he doesn't care. He's got as much health as he did when he started that fight. He's just healing through all of it, which is pretty damn impressive. So, gotta love that. Here, Count Noctilus is super injured, and now Dark Riders are coming for him. And if you have a look, only 30 melee defense on a Necrofax Colossus is not the best. That's why that abandoned ship. Um, ability of theirs, where it just drops out a load of deckhands, that's the best thing. That is the best thing to keep them alive. They can just tar pit around themselves, but that's already been used. That happens at half health. So that injured, he gets dragged down straight away. So these Dark Riders, probably the most valuable unit in this entire army today. It's absolutely insane how much work they've done. So here you can see Bleak Swords are coming back, but I mean, look at all this. Just everything is so injured. Luckily over here, though, the Necrofax Colossus did win this fight, but oh my word, Sorceress running in and getting blasted point blank. Only has 23 health. Wow. Okay, not expecting that. I mean, a crumbling, crumbling creature, and uh, somehow the Sorceress can't deal with him. That's pretty amusing, but he's just going to crumble now. He's just going to crumble because leadership is so low. So the Shades are back, but once again, just fodder got into the back line and just chased off all the artillery. It's really rough. Here, though, uh, Loki is reaching his healing cap, which is bad. He can't regenerate for much longer, and he is starting to suffer a bit. It's his abilities giving him the edge, but while the abilities are on cooldown, he does take some damage. So here you can see all the Bleak Swords and Dread Spears have come back, which is great. So uh, now Loki has some backup. This is a lot better for him. Also, right in the back, it's only really sort of pole arms left. Everything else is sort of crumbling of value. So all the animated hulks are crumbling. So it's pretty much just the fodder that, honestly, Loki can kill all on his own. Um, but with all these little dread spears and bleak swords and things milling about, um, he will be able to deal with them. And he does have some shades that are coming back. They can no longer really be chased off by anything. And uh, the bolt throwers can come back online. So these guys have no choice but to sort of gang up on what's left. But... It's a long way to travel for a zombie. It is an awfully long way to travel. So, uh, yeah, Loki is doing a wonderful job. He's had 96 kills, which is hard to see if that's of really significant value. But the fact is, there was nothing to kill him. There's just nothing to kill Loki. He's just so good at just sitting in combat and refusing to die. That regeneration is absolutely insane. I mean, really, you need, like, I don't know, maybe a death caster? Just keep hitting him with spirit leads, try and force him to his healing cap quicker? I don't know. It's not easy. It's not easy to stop Loki. So, uh, very, very cool. So, Pyrrhic victory. A wonderful fight by both of these guys. Uh, really amazing. Because uh, Tokshin, we've seen, he's he's actually pretty damn good. He's uh, he got, sort of got back into the scene um, the other day. He played in uh, Turin's Flash Tournament, which was really cool. So he started playing multiplayer again, and he's doing a great job. I love this build. I mean, this is so close. Because uh, Lightning Strikes, he actually sent me a few replays just with this exact build. And it was wiping the floor with everybody. So, if you want to defeat something like this, bring something like this. And if you want to bring any other Vampire Coast build, bring something like this. That uh, tends to be the advice here. Because this can be played very conservatively. There's nothing too fancy about it in terms of micro. It's, it's just a very 
simple but effective army. I really like it. It's really cool indeed. So, um, yeah, really serious props to Lightning Strikes here. This is wonderful. Wonderful army. And it does a great job against Vampire Coast. Just all of those shields, it means you can't just get gunned down. Um, you're not relying on elite stuff that can get gunned down, so that's great. You're not offering a good target. The most valuable things in the army are, well, Loki, who's a tiny, tiny, tiny target, and once he's in melee, you're never going to get rid of him. And uh, I guess the Fire Sorceress, but again, this guy, this girl could be hidden in the back somewhere. Um, so that's tough. And then, yeah, next expensive things, yeah, Shades. They're pricey, sure. But they stalk, so you're not going to be able to shoot them. Not really. Not unless, uh, you know... Lightning Strikes wants them to get shot at, frankly. He, he can just come out of the shadows and kill something with these guys. The combined fire of all these shades, you can get so much work done. So I think it's pretty great having something that can stalk as your most expensive stuff. Um, so yeah, I think stalk is going to be way more useful in this patch because of the Vampire Coast. Vampire Coast, just it's all about the guns. And if half your army is stalking, you just don't give them targets until yeah they're in range of you and then the Vampire Coast get shot at and they want to shoot things before they get shot at that's kind of how they do things so anyway uh, i've rambled on enough so guys if you enjoyed this please do comment like and subscribe and of course the floodgates have opened now so feel free to send me some replays because yeah i'm on the same patch as you now i'm not on that early access build while you guys are on the public one i can actually record your replays so uh feel free to send some in and yeah i want to see what you guys are doing with the vampire coast for sure so yeah like i said rambled long enough i'll see you in the next one guys have a good one